Let's do another example. Let's Let's do it. All right. Let's take a look at our next example. Okay. Example number two. Okay, we've got this in the way. All right. 15.3 grams of ammonia is placed in an empty 2-liter container. The pressure is measured at 925 millimeters of mercury. What will the temperature be? Okay. So, <laughs> same thing. Now, you'll notice when we're dealing with the ideal gas law, our conditions are not changing. We have one set of conditions, and we want to know one of the variables at those conditions. If conditions are changing, you're going to use... Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Gay right. Lussac's Law, um, Combined Gas Law. But if you just have one set of conditions and they don't change, ideal, ideal gas law. Ideal. Okay, so what do we know here? We've got 15.3 grams. Wait a second. Yeah. Well, let's do the P and stuff. P, well, P, V, and RT. What's P? 925 millimeters of mercury. 925 millimeters of mercury. And actually, let's just talk about this. That's not the right unit, Mr. Sanders. Nope. We've got to convert that to yep. atmosphere. So remember, we can just say there's 760 uh, millimeters of mercury in one atmosphere. Okay, so let's get our calculator out. Let's just do it right here. Okay. So 925 divided by 760 gives me 1.22. So we've got 1.22 atmospheres. atmospheres. Okay. All right. V equals, all right. Two liters, 2.0 right. There liters. it is right there, two liters. And that's, we like that. It's, that's the unit we're happy yep. with. PV equals N. Okay, P, so N's the next. Yeah, we uh, don't have N, but we have grams. But we do have And we 15, can turn grams into yeah. moles quite easily. So actually, we're going to write 15.3 grams over 1, and we're going to use the fact that ammonia is NH3, and then we're going to say grams in 1 mole. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to look on the periodic table, uh, find the molar mass of N, or atomic mass of N, and the atomic mass of hydrogen, add them up, and I 17. get 17. Cause, and I can just do that right on my calculator over here. So I'll just take uh, 15. Oh, I need more space, don't I? So 15. Point three, a little bit less than one, won't it? Yep. Divided by 17 is going to give me 0 0.9, 0 0.9, actually 0 0.900 zero, zero moles because um, this is actually 17.0 and we have 15.3. Okay, R, we know R, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And uh, T, I believe, must be what they're asking That's for. That's your unknown. Yep. What, what is will the be the temperature? And so uh, that's what we're trying to find. Okay. So uh, I'm going to move this over here. I think it'll make it easier. So I'm going to say my P is 1.22. So 1.22, that's P. I'm going to take the numbers out so it's easier to, we're just going to look at numbers. V is 0 0.900. Nope. Oh, that's R, or N, P, V. V is 2, 2.0 liters equals R, N, yeah. 0 0.900 times R, times T. And we know R is 0 0.0821. So I'm divide both sides by what, Mr. Sanders? 0 0.900 and R. So 0 0.900 R. Now, let me show you something on your calculator, guys. I'm going to do something pretty cool right here. I'm going to take 0 0.0821 and I'm going to push this stow button down here. And I'm going to stow it. I'm going to push the alpha button here and I'm going to find the R button, which is right here, the times button. Okay. And what I've just done is I've stored into the R button the number 0 0.0821. So yep. every time I put in R, I can uh, it saves that number. I don't have to remember it all the time. Yeah. Sometimes it gets erased and you have to redo it. So now what I'm going to do is take 1.22 times 2 divided by 0.9. Now those are both on the bottom, so don't forget you're going to say divided, divided by, by. Don't hit times there. If you hit times, you'll be all screwed up. Divided by alpha R. And I get this number. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. T equals 33, and that's going to be in what units? Uh, Kelvin. Kelvin. That's very cold, Mr. Sims. 33 mm -hmm. Kelvin is a very, very, very cold temperature. Yeah, that'd be, I, I would actually be surprised if ammonia is still a gas at 33 yeah, Kelvin. Yeah, I guess it's, it's probably a liquid. <laughs> but that's how you solve that problem. Okay. All right, let's look at the next example. Oh, no, we're done with it. Okay, we can uh, take away the calculator because that's it. All right. Now, deviations from ideal. You know, Mr. Sims, I have an ideal family. I think I can say that. You, I'm, yeah. My Look family. how little they are. They're so tiny. Yeah, actually, this picture is like way too old because, no you know, this is Caleb. And you know where Caleb stands? He's about this tall right now. So Caleb is like huge. My oldest son, who's now a He's junior. He's almost here. my height now. He's six feet tall. So this would be Caleb today. Emily is at my height. And Katie's still kind of short. She's right here. So... But she's getting taller. So these, oh, oops, that's a Katie. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a I, second. I got them I mixed up. But she's, she's actually, it's more like this. She's going to be my basketball player. Okay. Anyways, but I, they're, they're ideal. But are they perfect? No. No. 
I, I, I will confess that my family is not perfect, but they're kind of ideal, because ideal means it's close enough to perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so what is an ideal guess? One that's close, close enough. enough to perfect. Right. Okay, so ideal is, well, like I said, ideal is close enough to perfect. Okay, now let's talk about it really. What does it mean when I say, what does an ideal guess have or it has? It has two things, two very important things. Number one, it's not attracted to itself. Okay, we talked a little bit about that in a previous lesson. I think that was 7.1 where the molecules do not attract nor do they repel each other. So they basically just don't interact. Molecules, there's no attractive force between them. They don't right. like each other and they also don't push away each other. Right. Now, in reality, they do, but it's such an insignificant amount that the conditions that we measure gases in that we, we just ignore right. it. And secondly, they take up no space. Right. Now, this so, is a weird one to get your mind around. Yeah, we're assuming that the gas particles are so tiny that the space that they occupy is insignificant compared to the space in between all of the molecules. So in this box that I've just drawn, I have gases. Now, what I, I mean, they take up the space of this box, but the actual volume of the sphere of the gas is insignificant, insignificant, or we consider it to be zero if it's an ideal gas. And mm -hmm. that exactly is not zero. But think of it this way. Let's say if I have in this room, I'm standing in a large classroom, and I found two marbles in this room, which is actually probably even too big. But let's just say for the sake of argument, two marbles. Do they take up any space in this room? Uh, they do, but it's so insignificant compared <laughs> to the size of the room that we really don't care. So that's what we're kind of getting at. Yeah. OK. All right. So there is actually another thing is, Ideal gases don't really exist, right? but they're close enough. Right. You know, there's one other factor that's not listed here, and that's when the gas molecules bump into themselves yes. or, or to the sides of the containers, we assume that there's really no energy transfer, that it's yeah. a completely elastic collision yeah. is what we say. Scientists call it an elastic collision. Right. And this is actually how we can look at an ideal gas uh, graphically. Yep. When we look, oops, I wanted to stay there. I thought I had a thing there. Um, so if we look at it graphically, what we've got here is that depends on a couple of things. Mm. The... Um, you know, this is important. I don't think for these guys. Yeah. Just at the conditions we measure gases in, they're going to be close enough to ideal. Okay. But here, if I want to make a gas ideal, now mm -hmm. we talk about gases in this room, like at the beginning of the podcast, oxygen and nitrogen, mm -hmm. but there are gases in this room that are not ideal right. because um, they're highly compressed. They're highly compressed or they've right. actually got very attractive forces. Like right. water vapor is not ideal in right. this room. But. Um, how could I make. I can make any gas ideal, though. Yeah. Any if gas. you get the pressure low enough. Yeah. And so I can take temperature. I can take this pair of scissors right here, and I can take this pair of scissors and I could melt the scissors. They're made of uh, iron, and then I could heat them up, and I could turn them into a gas. You could, and then I could make them ideal. Okay. But I would have to make them ideal. I would need uh, two. I need uh, one of two conditions: a very high temperature. Mm -hmm. So I can make anything ideal if the temperature is high. Now, when I say high, I mean high in comparison to the boiling point of that chemical. Right. So in this room, oxygen is ideal. It's a because lot higher than its boiling its point. Its boiling point is minus 200 and something degrees Celsius. We are 200 well and something. That. We're like almost 300 degrees above that yeah. in this room. Now, if I wanted yeah. to take the scissors, I, if I could get it 300 degrees above its boiling point, which I don't know what it is, um, no I, could, I could make it ideal. Right. Second thing that would help it is if I could have a low pressure. So they're more spread apart. Yep. So if the gas particles are further spread apart, look at the picture over here. If these gas particles are a long ways away, then they will behave in a more ideal fashion. So guys, the moral of this point of the story is that ideal gases can be, anything can be an ideal gas if you have a high enough temperature and or a low enough pressure. Key thing really is the temperature. Give it above its, you know, so it's about, way above its right. boiling point. Okay. Okay. I think that that sums up uh, ideal gas laws. You'll do some problems. Very easy worksheet in this unit. So, okay. So we'll see you in class. Bye. See ya.